You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Love Talk Live. Today I have with me in studio, Jackie Rubinoff. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Thanks for coming on the show. So she's phenomenal and she works with pheromones. We have never talked about pheromones on this show yet, and so I'm so excited. She has a company called Eye of Love, where we're going to get all into everything that this is, but these are some of the pheromones and a little pop thing for my phone. Um, So we're going to be talking about pheromones and the importance of them and all about pheromones, and we're also going to be talking about the fact that she is a a love coach, and so we're going to be asking her some questions about her work and also her own personal love story. So here's a little bit about Jackie. Jackie Rubinoff is a Southern California-based certified love coach and relationship expert with a mission to help people live their best lives. She is an entrepreneur and the vice president of Eye of Love, a rapidly growing international pheromone brand specializing in products to enhance daily life. Jackie has a degree in family and consumer sciences from the California State University of Northridge and continued her studies at Loveology University, which we're going to get back to because I Googled it, looked it up last night. I'd never heard of it, and this is very exciting. She grew up in San Diego and has a passion for guitar, dancing, and all things music. She's well-rounded. So, Thank you. Jackie, before I ask you about Loveology University, how did you meet, she's married, how did you meet your husband? Tell us the story. My viewers love inspirational love stories. So I met my husband when I was actually 16 years old. I know it's crazy. Um, I was living in San Diego. That's where I grew up. And I was with all my friends. We were driving to a party. And when we were on the way there, the party got canceled. Um, So we were turning around, we were going home, and all of a sudden we saw lights and music just driving down the street, and I was like, we're already dressed up, let's go inside, and like, let's be spontaneous. You just went into a random house party. Literally a random house party. Did you know if it were, was it a teenage party, or it could have been like... Like, I saw some teenage-looking people (laughs) outside, so like, I assumed maybe it was teenagers, but we were young and crazy, and... We just decided to go for it. Um, I got it. That's something I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> totally got it. Now <laughs> I obviously wouldn't. You wouldn't but, go into a random. Yeah. And it's, or maybe you would. Maybe maybe I would. Who knows? Um, so we went into the party, and there was actually some people that I knew there from a different school. And long story short, I was dancing. My friends were dancing. And it came time to leave. And Lee, my husband, he asked me to dance. And I said no. And then had so, you seen him throughout the evening? I, I, we need these details. I, I did see him, but I wasn't paying attention to him because I was dancing with someone else and I was just wasn't paying attention. I was just in my own world. Okay. Um, so he asked me to dance and I said no. And then he asked me for my phone number and I said no because I was leaving and he asked me for my name so he could find me on Facebook. And I was like, okay, fine. At this point, I felt bad for him already. So I was like, okay, fine. I gave him my name. And sure enough, right away, he added me on Facebook and proceeded to try to take me out for the next three months. (laughs) He wanted to take me to coffee, take me here, there. And I just kept telling him, I'm too busy. I have dance every night. I have things going on. And then finally, he asked me to go sailing. And I was like, okay, fine, but my friend has to come because she's staying at my house and I'm not going out into the middle of the ocean with some guy (laughs) I don't even know. (laughs) But did you have any friends in common on Facebook or anything? Um, He was in, like, the community. He was in, like, I I knew some people that he knew because he was at... Totally random. It wasn't, like, totally random, but it was pretty random. Okay. He, he went to like a really small private Jewish school actually. So he, he was like in the community, but I didn't know him at all. Um, so I finally agreed to go sailing with him and um, it was really sweet. He, he did a barbecue, all his friends came and we've been together ever since. Wow. So, yeah. 
And you're, tw- how old are you now? 28. Now I'm 28. I just turned 28 last week. Happy so birthday. Thank you. We've been together for about, I think, 12 years now. That is incredible. Yeah. I love hearing these young love stories because they don't happen nearly as much as they used to. Yeah, it's I pretty mean, crazy. so rare. It's so special. Yeah, I got, I thank God every day. I'm so lucky that we found each other and because it's, it's hard to grow old with someone. Usually, you know, you either grow apart or you grow together. And I really feel like it's special that we've been able to really grow together. Yes, I love it. And it, it just sounds meant to be because there are other couples that meet very young and then it's just not meant to be. Right. So for our viewers out there, let's say that our adults now, they did not meet their soulmate at 16. What what would you say, like, what's your, what's your advice for just things to look for in that feel good to you in, in the relationship of knowing that this is just the one? I think it's really important to know exactly what you're looking for before you start to date and make a list of your, you know, core values and your must-haves in a relationship so that you know exactly what you want before you know, you get too far down the line. So you don't end up compromising or, you know, settling. Um, You really just know what you're looking for right off the bat. Um, And as far as just knowing if they're the one or not, I think if all of your values and everything align and then just if the chemistry is there and you can feel it, um, the whole package, I guess, is kind of the way to know. And just as you're talking, what's coming to me is, is that you know that it's not the one if there are any doubts. And that might be controversial to people, but I I feel like it is very black and white. Like if there is even a sliver of doubt of if this is the right person for you or not, go with that feeling. Mm -hmm. Because that sliver of doubt can become a huge something down the line. A little red flag can become a huge fire. Right. Right? Right, yeah. Definitely. And I mean, it's important that you look for those red flags right from the beginning, like I was saying. Um, So you just pay attention to those signs and you'll feel it if they're the one. And if everything clicks, you're going to feel like you want to be with them all the time. You're going to feel that amazing feeling. I love that also. Um, So I'm interviewing couples. And one of the things that they say is that they are each other's favorite person. They can't imagine life without them Mm -hmm. and so it sounds like you and your husband have that yeah definitely he's my best friend in the world we we don't get sick of each other which is yeah you can't get enough of each other that's another can't can't get enough of each other so it's it's fun I love it I can't wait to meet him yes you'll definitely meet him (laughs) maybe we'll have Lee on the show sometime yes and we'll do an interview I, I do that also Okay, know, yeah on camera couples interviews we'll see if we can get him to do it is he shy He's not shy, but he's just like not used to being like in the in the limelight, I guess. But I'm sure he would do it. He's he's usually down for everything all the time. So I'm sure we could get him in now. And you seem like you're down for everything. So that's interesting because usually personality types are different in a relationship. Like a lot of times it's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. But that's great. that You guys are both down for everything all the time. I'm really not, to be honest. He's oh. if if you ask him to because well, you're the any, one that was like, we're going in that party. I was very fun back in the day. Oh, she used to be fun. <laughs> I used okay. to be fun. Now, now I'm more of a grandma. Like I'm a homebody. I'm so happy just being at home in my PJs, snuggled up any day. But he will, if you asked him like right now, let's go to Vegas and just go. He'd be like, great. Like, let's go right now. Okay, so he's that one in the relationship. He's like the yes man. Like, he will always say yes. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. We'll ask him to come on the show, and he'll say yes. (laughs) Exactly. Lee, if you're watching, you're coming on the show. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We've already decided. Okay, so let's get into your company. Okay. Eye of Love. I am so excited about this. Tell the viewers about what you brought me. So I brought you our gift set, which is kind of like an added advantage from morning to night. Um, So it has three different fragrances for women to attract men. You have first Morning Glow, which is your daytime fragrance for female, and it's super fresh and floral and fun. Um, Then we come over to One Love here, 
um, which is your special occasion fragrance. Did I say this was the special occasion fragrance, or did I say you daytime didn't point fragrance? Out. You were just saying you were just talking okay. about it. Okay. Okay. So this is your daytime fragrance. Sorry, I think I got them mixed up. First, you have your daytime fragrance, which is morning glow, which, like I said, super fresh floral. Then you come over to One Love, your special occasion fragrance, which is super um, soft and um, floral. Then you have um, After Dark, which is your, once you come home with your significant other, it's a super sweet, sexy vanilla flavor. And I'm so excited because I love vanilla. It's literally my favorite Oh, you'll love pheromone. this one then. So... Somebody Now, do you guys have a store? Do you have a website? Somebody reaches out to you, and they can buy these individually, I'm assuming. They say, I want this for this occasion. How does this work? Yeah, so we do have a website. It's called www.ioflove.com. Um, we're also sold in retailers in over 20 countries, so there's a lot of different places that you can get our products. And we sell over 100 different products we have. Um, everything from perfumes, colognes, massage candles. What body is a sprays. massage candle? Because I saw that on your list. <laughs> it's it's a fun one. So um, a massage candle, the base of our candle is made with a sh um, shea butter and coconut oil, almond oil. So when you light it, it melts completely into essential oil. So you can use it on your body as a, for a massage or even as your own moisturizer. Oh, I need to get that. Yeah. It's, it's and then good it smells stuff. amazing. Smells amazing. And it's has, moisturizing. Has pheromones and is moisturizing. Now I know in this world we're living in, everybody and me included, we are all like um, I I am included in that list. Want to make sure the grammar is correct. I'm a grammar freak. Is clean chemicals. Can you tell us about that? Are there any chemicals in this? So. Our pheromone itself is, um, the whole product is actually vegan, um, cruelty-free. Um, the pheromone itself is derived from the wild yam root, so there's no um, animal products or anything like that. Um, and then the fragrances themselves are made from different ingredients, such as vanilla, jasmine, Natural. It's not, yeah, it's not a synthetic fragrance, it's a, like a natural fragrance. Okay, that's amazing. My next question for you is, so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, so tell us some success stories. Do people come in and they want to attract a certain person and then they come back to you and they say it worked? Tell oh, us. yeah. Um, I think I should rewind to what is a pheromone first because I think a lot of viewers might not know what a pheromone is. You would yes. I mean, I'm thinking it's it's something that a natural pheromone comes from our body, right? Mm -hmm. Naturally. Yeah. Yep. And it's used to either attract or repel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, we all have pheromones, that, like you said, that we give off, and it's what makes people um, attracted to you, but not only in a sexual way. Um, if there is an attraction, it will break down the walls and allow you to take that relationship further. But if there's no attraction at all, then you're not going to immediately, you know, want to jump all over someone. It's going right. to just feel like um, aura and charisma. So you'll just kind of feel good being around that person in a friendly way, not necessarily a sexual way. Yes. So rewind. Okay. So, and you're you're bring you're bringing this up because you're saying certain pheromones we are we are attracted to certain pheromones and not to others. So someone that we feel the aura and the charisma with, their pheromones don't really align with us, or we're just not, we don't feel it? It could be a variety of things. You might not be physically attracted to them in general. So you might just be comfortable with them in a friendly way, but you might not be sexually like attracted to them. something might smell good, but you could, it just processes as, oh, that smells good, but not like, that smells good. Exactly. <laughs> like, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. got it. So tell us some stories or story. Yes. So <laughs> I actually got an email today from one of our customers telling me that he feels like a lion when he's wearing our confidence pheromone and he feels like he can achieve anything at work and that everyone is like surrounding him when he wears confidence. But then when he wears romantic, he feels um, like more like like sensual and which is funny because it's actually like what we're 
we make different fragrances for different times of day. And it's funny because he wrote to us that he really feels like bold and confident when he's wearing confident and that when he's wearing romantic, he's more like the women are around, but it's more of like a sensual thing, which is so funny. Wow. So yeah. it's working. It's it working. Yes. It's, it's good. We get testimonials every day like that from our clients. So that's what keeps us going and keeps us motivated. And that's, that's why we do it. And this company you said has been around for how many years? It's been around for about eight years now. We launched internationally about eight years ago, and then we brought it to the States about three years ago. Wow. That is just amazing. And this is why I love doing this show, because we get to share things that maybe people didn't know about, and then now all of a sudden more people will know about this. And you're in this field, like I'm, I'm in a helping field. I love helping people. And so it's not, this isn't just buy this product, like buy this car. This is buy this product because it can enhance your life. Right, right. Yeah, it, and it really does, whether you're in sales, you're in hospitality, you want to make more sales, more tips. We have um, like a real estate company that every single person in the company, that's is like my favorite story, every single one of them buys our pheromones because they swear that they sell more houses when they're wearing our pheromones. So like I said, it's not just sexual. It's, it's for your everyday life as well. Wow. And how did you come up with the name Eye of Love? So it's actually my father's company. He's the owner and he... Um, he loved the name Eye of Love and he just loved that everything, you know, starts with your eyes and it's just about sensuality and love and romance. So it was all him. <laughs> and there's a there's a image of an eye. Um, my my wheels are turning. I'm thinking maybe you guys could do like the evil some of the evil eye. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> I'm do the all opposite kinds of, of a brander, yeah. but <laughs> like ooh. Yeah, we put we put the eyes on everything as you can see. <laughs> Very cool. And I, I love that you are incorporating love with eyes because it really is a mixture of what we see and what we feel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we smell, obviously. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it, so it's like what you guys are doing is, is the, the smell is just enhancing what you're feeling and what you're seeing. Exactly. Yeah. And the pheromone itself is completely unscented. Um, and then we add our own fragrances to it as well that also have attracting properties. So for example, jasmine, ylang ylang, vanilla, we use different fragrances that also have attracting properties in addition to the pheromone. And do you actually go into the factories and, and you're there for different like developments? Yeah, I'm, I'm in China. We, d we develop a lot of our products in Did China. Did you say you're in China? Yeah, we go several times a year. Wow. So, yeah, I go there to do you know development, pick out packaging, we import um, our fragrances and different things from France, but then we do like the assembling in China. So I'm always there. <laughs> I've never been there. Maybe I'll go with you next time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a trip, but it's, it's amazing. I love seeing different cultures and getting to have these amazing experiences. So cool. And I'm just so impressed. It, she's so young, and you're so young, and you've just done – so much and you just you know you have this entrepreneurial essence to you and so it's so great that you're doing all this at such a young age thank you yeah it's it's a lot of fun and it's just been great to combine all of my passions love and relationships and also like my more creative and business side so it's it's fun that I've been able to kind of explore the different channels I love it <laughs> so let's move into Love Allergy University, because I saw this in, in her notes of things that she wanted to talk about, and I, like I said, I Googled it, and I'm fascinated. I love that they're not, they're not messing around. Like, no. they're not calling it anything else. <laughs> not. But literally, it's called Love Allergy University. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about it and tell us about it? Um, so I found out about it. The, um, the founder of Loveology University is actually um, Dr. Ava Cadell, who's um, you know one of the top sexologists. Um, she has her PhD. She's um, an amazing um, relationship expert as well. And I, I think it was maybe at a trade show where I met her, but she told me about her university, and I was just interested at the time in, 
exploring further, I saw how many people, you know, really needed help in when it came to relationships and in their daily life. And I wanted to help people on another level rather than just the products. Um, so I connected with Dr. Ava and I went through her university. Um, it was all online and took me about, I think, a year and a half to go wow. through. Wow. And I received my certification and now I'm a love coach and relationship expert. So, so can you tell us about some of the classes that you took? How does it work? I took everything that you could think of, starting from flirting, I dating, <laughs> literally every every topic that you could think of when it comes to dating and relationships. So, can you tell us something? So, when I I did see the flirting, and so I mean, I think that is so cool uh-huh. because it just made me think. Like, I personally. I feel like I've always been, I have like a flirty personality and that's never been a problem for me. However, I started thinking, okay, well maybe, not maybe, there are people out there that need to learn how to flirt. And yes, I've met some of them, some of my clients, I've kind of needed to push them. Mm -hmm. Um, But but I guess from a technical point of view, what what do they teach you? What are the things that that they teach you in school about it? Um, So there's a few different tips. So um, first of all, you could use, um, let's say, a flirting prop. So if you go to the beach, you can bring, let's say, your dog with you because it invites people to want to come over and talk to you. Or you can wear, you know, like a really fun, colorful hat or something sexy to get people to come over and talk to you. So just something that, I guess, can make people want to spark up a conversation with you. Um, That's one of the things. Another one would be um, starting conversations in different ways. So one of them would be um, starting with a compliment followed by an open-ended question as a way to start a conversation with someone rather than just the pickup line where they can either, you know. (laughs) Which don't work. (laughs) Yeah, don't work. Yeah. So are you, do you encourage, I I encourage women to do this also because pickup lines are, or initiating conversation I believe should not be just for men I think that girls can go up and say things also I think they definitely should there's no reason not to and if you end up with that person amazing and if you don't end up with them who cares right you have nothing to lose you really have nothing to lose why not and that's what that's what I say to my clients and friends who are single that truly you know I mean I just remember I was always so picky and if I saw a guy across the bar and he, and I was attracted to him, I had to talk to him before I left, which I know is not that common because a lot of <laughs> girls would not do that. But because I had that experience and I saw that it was 99% a positive experience, mm-hmm. unless he had a girlfriend or something. <laughs> um, so I would just, because you, exactly, you have nothing to lose. Nothing. You just go over, you say hi. You could, I always said, you could say the sky is blue. And if the guy is attracted to you and wants to talk to you, he will. Yeah, it's true. You really have nothing to lose. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to be creative. You just need to be yourself, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's so important when it comes to dating is really to be yourself because people always try to put on a show and are nervous and try to be something they're not. And you, at the end of the day, you want a husband and a partner who loves you for who you are, not for, not for someone else. So I just remember that I used to be at the bars and it would be like blaring loud music and For some reason, the conversations that I would have with these guys, like, not that they were deep or, like, we wouldn't be talking about, like, heavy stuff, but the the content of the conversations that I would have with these guys in a bar, I know was very different than other girls. It was just because I love talking. And so I would just engage in, like, I would like to have interesting conversations at bars. And sometimes the guys would be like, you know, I just have not had a conversation like this (laughs) in a bar. So maybe... Maybe that was just me being myself, and I love having interesting conversations. Yeah. Why not? Everybody has their own style, right? Exactly. So did you, well, you met your husband at 16, so you didn't really have a lot of those years of. (laughs) Yeah. No, I didn't have so many years of dating, unfortunately, and (laughs) fortunately. Yes, exactly, because it just, it worked out. It worked out. And he had his own style of flirting with you and pursuing and everything. Yeah. So as we were talking also just now, I was watching, I was thinking about flirting, and 
I was watching an episode of Friends last night. And it's so, I mean, the timing is so perfect. There's an episode where it's when everybody finds out about Rachel, sorry, about Monica and Chandler. Do you watch Friends? No, I'm so bad. I know. Oh, no. There's, it's not bad or good. I know. But now you, for what you do, you should watch it. So Yeah. So the group of friends are just slowly finding out about Monica and Chandler dating because they wanted to keep it a secret. And it, it's a long, convoluted story. But this, the character Phoebe, mm-hmm. anyhow, she starts flirting with Chandler. And she's not a very flirt. Her character is just not very flirty at all. But she turned it on and she just, you. it was really cool to see how when you're flirting, it is different. Because they're friends, mm-hmm. but she was pretending that she liked him, and so she she turned it she on. Turned she it on. turned it on and turned it off, <laughs> and she's like, "Ooh, my, my touchy," you know, like, "Oh," and then, <laughs> like laughing. And so, it's just ironic that I watched that episode last night because yeah. I was thinking, "Wow, flirting! There really is not necessarily an art, but I guess there is," you know. Yeah. And, and it was fun to watch. That's fun. I need to watch it. I know. Everybody tells me, they're like, are you crazy? You don't watch Friends? I'm like, I know. I just never started it. Like, I need I need to get on the bandwagon. <laughs> but if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like, yeah. obviously, you have your own yeah. shows that you like to watch. Yeah, but I do need a new show, so. Well, it's, it's Good always timing. on. I mean, yeah. Friends is. Okay, so let's see what else we're going to talk about. Um, so in terms of coaching that you've done, what have you found really works, let's say, with the single people? Um, with single people, I go through giving them, like we said, the flirting tips and giving them, you know, the courage to go out and talk to them. Um, I give them, you know, different tips such as where to go because usually their first concern with me is like, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm That's always fun. busy. I'm working. And I always tell them to narrow it down and go to specific places to meet the type of person that they're looking for. So if they're looking for a doctor, don't go to a bar expecting to meet a doctor. Just get sick and go to the doctor. (laughs) Or volunteer at a hospital. I love that. Just just narrow it down to make it, you know, especially if you're older and you're not into going to clubs and bars. And most of the time, people at bars, uh, as, besides for me, who went to a party and found someone. Right. <laughs> most people don't most, most people, it's, it's harder to find who you're looking for out at a club or bar. But of course, it happens, and it's amazing. But um, I just tell them to go to specific places. Um, and I help them with, you know, like I said, making lists of exactly what they're looking for so they feel confident going into it they have their list they know what they're looking for they know where to go um, and I just get them confident and ready pretty much what would you say about coffee shops have you do you feel like people meet there is it a good place to go Um, coffee shops I think I think places where people are working is is it's definitely a good place you can't go wrong but it's it just depends where honestly and what the vibe is and if it's more of like a social coffee shop or if everyone's just kind of like in their own world you don't want to like with earphones on. with earphones on you don't want to like walk <laughs> over to them and be like hey but it just it just depends on the place and the vibe and if it's more of like a social atmosphere um but you can, like like I said, if you're into, let's say, fitness, you could go to like an acro yoga class where you're doing things with partners and you're partnered up. So there's so many different places that you can go that that are more friendly for, you know, talking to people. Yes. And engaging. And engaging. So I'm, that's interesting you brought up yoga. Um, I was in a class and there was a, there was a guy in the class and he looked... Like someone, he, I just had a feeling that he liked women. I just had a feeling. Um, and I love fixing people up. And he just didn't seem like a typical, I'm bringing this up because I'm seeing that there are more heterosexual men going to yoga classes. So mm-hmm. girls out there, they do exist. And I literally went up to him and I introduced myself. It turns out, very random, but we, his, I know his family. No way. <laughs> Very of random. Of course. <laughs> very random. He's 27, but I know his family that lives in Omaha, Nebraska. And he, this was in San Diego. What? Very, very, very bizarre. Um, this good looking heterosexual guy. And I literally said to him, um, well, I asked if he's single. And 
could I asked if I could fix them up and I also just pointed out that I feel like it's great that he does yoga and he said that I mean he does other sport stuff also type of things but um yeah I think he said like he's working I don't know if it was balance or not strength something flexibility maybe something but yeah. I see him in that class a lot and I I really would like to fix, he's actually around your age I'd like to fix him he's very mm. cute very cute I'll definitely see who I have on my list because I, I always am trying to set what up people. What if he's watching right now? I know. I'm always trying to set up people as well, so I'm like thinking in my head. But I will show you. His we picture. will we will make a match. <laughs> Nick, if you're out there, we're working on. We it. are ready for you. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about where to meet people, um, and then what about what about couples that come to you? Like, what have you said or what have you seen in terms of? enhancing their relationships um i think it's really about listening to one another because so often they just want to feel heard and they want to feel like the other partner is listening it's it's so basic but it comes down to (laughs) just wanting to feel loved wanting to feel heard um and i just give them different tips and we do different exercises and trust building exercises going back to the acro yoga it also works once you are a couple, it works as a great trust building exercise because you have to work on communication, balance. Um, Should we tell the viewers what acro yoga is? Yeah, acro yoga is basically partner yoga. So it's you and a partner and you can do anything basic from like the standard airplane pose that everybody can do and work your way from there. Um, My husband and I do acro yoga all the time. It's so much fun. Yeah. And That's like wonderful. I said, it's just great to build trust. You build communication because they're holding you up. You have to tell them what feels good, what doesn't. Um, so that's a, that's one exercise that I could tell them. Um, there's another one called, let's say, a passion wheel. So let's say they're not they're having trouble with intimacy and having trouble um, getting what they want out of the relationship. So I tell them to create like a wheel. And they like divide it up into sections and then they take turns putting on the wheel something that they want. So it could be anything from like more PDA or more affection or whatever they want. They put it on the list and then every day they go through, they close their eyes, spin the wheel and choose one of the things. So that's fun. Yeah, just all kinds of fun things like that just to get and I give them activities so they have to do them each week and report back. Um, so it's keeping it playful. Yeah. It's most of the time they're just losing, you know, intimacy and they just need to connect again and need to feel heard and loved. And then they need to wear their their pheromones. Their of pheromones. Course. Of course. <laughs> they come back and they just they're just beyond in love. Exactly. Beyond. Exactly. <laughs> Give them a massage candle, they are good to go. <laughs> they come back, they're writing thank you notes, they're yes. yelping. Yes. <laughs> Giving you all really good reviews. Exactly. <laughs> and this happens overnight, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure it takes no, work. No, definitely not. It does. It, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, relationships take work and time. And, but when two people really want it to work, then it's not rocket scientists. Right. Ro- rocket science. Right, right. As long as both people are ready and willing to make it work, you can make it work. It's just about putting the time in. And both people need to want to exactly yeah yeah like you can't have the wife being like come on honey let's make a wheel and the guy is like what yeah yeah and we and then let's say he makes the wheel but then he's not really into it and he's just doing it to humor her you want two people that are like let's make the wheel right like let's do this right and it's like that with all relationships you need both people to be you know equally involved it can't be one person that's trying to you know or the whole what's the point? What's the point? Yeah. yeah, that's not a relationship. Yes. So now, then the third category, the, I'm just going by like people I work with, singles, couples, breakups, divorces. So then third category, people that, let's say people come to you and they're like, they've had a breakup or a divorce and they're getting out there again. What do you say to them? So if they're, if, are they already ready to date or did they just break up? They're ready because they're coming to you and they're like, make right. me smell good. And right. what do I do? Right. So it comes, to, it's similar to what we were saying in the beginning. They want to know, first of all, they need to make sure that they are completely over their ex because 
if they're coming to me and right. they just want to rebound and they just want to get out there, it's not going to work. They have to completely go through the process of, you know, getting over their ex. Completion. Completion. Doing whatever they need to do, taking however long they need to make sure that they are over their ex. Um, so that's first. And then once they are ready, then I tell them, you know, the similar things that I was telling you in the beginning, making sure they know exactly what they want, making sure that they're not, you know, repeating past behaviors mm, yes, and important. giving them the same thing, the flirting tips, telling them where to go, doing all that fun stuff. But they're actually at an advantage because they have been in, whether it's a long-term relationship or a marriage, they know what they don't want right. because they've experienced it right. rather than a single person who's never really had right. a long-term relationship. Right. Yeah. No, it's definitely different. But once we go through the, you know, the breakup process, then it's the similar, similar situation. But hopefully they'll be more ready and know what they're more looking like for. More clear almost. Right. Right. More Not clear. that you can't be clear at the beginning because um, everybody's different. Some people don't need to right. go through a breakup or divorce to know exactly right. what makes them happy or not. Right. But then other people, as I call their soul's curriculum, that's what they have to go through. And then yep. the other people have to go through other things. Right. So anything else that we that you'd like to talk about? Um, I see pheromone jewelry. What does that mean? Oh, actually, pheromone jewelry I created with Dr. Ava Cadell, who started Loveology University. Wow. Once we started, you know, talking and I was going through her university, she approached us because she loved our products. And she had an idea to create um, wearable pheromone products. So we collaborated together and we created pheromone jewelry, which is, so it's actually made with black lava rock, which is a porous stone. Ooh. So you can spray, and it has energetic properties too. So, love, love, yeah. well, I love Hawaii. I know yeah. lava's other places, but yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about Hawaii now. I know, me too. Um, okay, so you, so that's you spray the jewelry with our pheromones. So we have like, for example, necklaces, bracelets, um, you spray the jewelry with the pheromones and then you can wear it all day and it just absorbs the pheromone. You don't need to, some people don't like to spray directly on their skin. Mm. So they just spray the jewelry and they're good to go. <laughs> I'm imagining like this girl walking down the street being like spraying her necklace. <laughs> you, you'll see it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to visit the site and, and yeah. check it out. Yeah. We have a lot of fun, fun products. And this is perfect timing for all of you out there who are looking for a Christmas or Hanukkah gift, a holiday or New Year's gift, and then Valentine's coming up. Definitely, once again, what is your website? How do people purchase these products? Um, you can go to www.ioflove.com. So it's just E-Y-E-O-F-L-O-V-E.com. Wonderful. And how do people contact you or if they want to see your Instagram, et cetera? Um, my Instagram is Jax, J-A-X, and then Rubinoff, R-U-B-I-N-O-F-F. -F. And you can see all kinds of fun relationship advice and just a little bit about my life. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us Thank today. you for having me. This was amazing. So much fun. Hopefully we'll get the hubs back here too. <laughs> we will make it happen. Lee, we're coming for you. Yes. So thank you so much, and thank you for joining us. And as always, you can contact me at www.therelationshipexpert.com. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, hope you have a wonderful evening. You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio.